BGFC fighter Luis Baboon Palomino says Jim Ehlers brings nothing to the table and he will retain his title. The story coming up next. Hey there, combat sports fans. Susan Singari here with Luis Baboon Palomino, who was defending his title against Jim Ehlers at BKFC 14. How are you tonight, Luis? Doing great. How are you yourself? I am good. Thanks for taking the time to speak with us. You know, Luis, you are fighting a gritty opponent in Jim Ehlers. Mm -hmm. What have you done specifically to prepare for him? Well, you know, we, we've been getting ready for him. Um, in, in, when we were in a, in a tournament format, he was, you know, pretty much the toughest opponent there. And then the fight was offered, it didn't happen. And the fight was offered again, that didn't happen. So we've been preparing for him, you know. Jim is a very tough opponent. You know, he's, he's, he's not scared of anything. He walks forward, he's looking for action, looking to knock out everything, he swings. But at the same time, it's, it's sort of like a, like a Neanderthal, you know, just, you know, looking to just eat something, right? But um, he's, he's stuck in the mud, you know, he's really stuck in the mud. He has, he has his things, his strengths, but at the same time, his strengths are his weaknesses. You know, he's, he's stuck in the mud, he's, he's flat-footed, he's going straight forward in one direction with the hopes of just landing that big one shot. After that, what else does he have to offer? It's not like you've already picked apart some of the holes in his game that you can take advantage of then. Yes, definitely. You know, I've, I've studied him for a while. And, and as, as we've mentioned in the past, we were all training partners, you know. This this game, this fight game, is, is not, you can't just go and, and, and change in a matter of months, you know. Like, what he has been showing that he is in his previous fights, what he showed in the fight with Caleb, where he went the distance, you know, it is what it is. You know, there's there's not much of a big change. You can come back from that. You know, it's not much growth from there. You know, I mean, it, it takes years to master new scales and new levels. You know, there's levels to this game. You know, so you know, it's it's, you know, it's not so much that he's going to come with difference. You know, it it's, it is what it is. He's going to come in and he's going to look for that one punch, that one hit a quitter, that that you know, that clinch game and, and that try to land those uppercuts, the overhands. You know, there's nothing much different that he can come and bring to the table in such a little time. Luis, how do you want to start the fight? I'm landing first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely landing first. I'm landing harder, I'm landing faster, and I'm not getting hit. You know, making a statement that that little game that he's been imposing on other opponents is just not going to run through me. Too much experience, too much power, too much speed, too much head movement, too much footwork, just too much for him, period. You know, Luis, I spoke with your last opponent, Isaac Valley Flag, and he said you were a crafty fighter. Yeah, uh, you know, Valley Flag, you know, he's a very game opponent, very tough dude. Um, I, I really, in my mind, I was I was in there for like, you know, a, a few rounds. You know, I didn't I didn't see him going down easy. You know, at all. I didn't underestimate him at all, and. I guess it was a little too much speed, too much power for him. You know, it, it did surprise me that he went down, but then again, the spot that I caught him on, it took his equilibrium out, and then I, you know, when I cornered him, I just finished him off. You know, um, you know, game opponent, but with the right, with the right game plan, speed and power, things can be done quick. <laughs> what range are you looking to fight at? A range. Well, the only range that that my opponent can fight in. <laughs> Is the is the close range, so I have no problem with that. I have no problem with meeting him in the in the middle because I am actually better in that. You know, my my best uh, the best of me comes out in the exchanges. You know, I exchange with a lot of speed and power and movement at the same time that I'm exchanging. So I am better than what he's good at. I'm better than him at. But if I want to leave him in the wind, distance will kill him footwork will kill him. He wouldn't know how to measure himself out. So he wants to make this fight dirty, nasty, and as soon as possible, we just get into that clinch game and impose his will on me, which will not happen. You know, Luis, I spoke with your opponent earlier today, and Jim says he's going to finish you. What's your response? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want it any other way. I wouldn't want to fight anybody 
that w- didn't really believe in them that they can finish me or beat me in some way somehow. If if he didn't have that belief in him, then he wouldn't be a, a considered a real opponent to me. Yeah. And you know, as I've said in previous interviews, I want not just the toughest and the best, but I want the biggest name possible after I take him out. You know, once I take out Jim, you know, and, and I solidify my spot, you know, as a true champion, because he is right. You know, it, he him being a four and zero guy with three knockouts in the in the BKFC. You know, having all those fights before I even stepped in there, I had to take him out. You know, that's that's for sure. You know, he's next in you know, line, and and I have to make a statement out of him. Once once we do this, I want the biggest name possible to keep making BKFC grow. You know, so you know, having that said, you know, if he didn't believe in him that he can beat me, then it, you know, this fight would be nothing. So have you thought about who you might want to fight next then? No, I, I'm, I'm definitely not overlooking Jim. You know, I'm 100% only focused on him. And if I can say anything about who I want to fight next, it's just what I said. The biggest name, the most popular name out there possible. You know, Luis, you've had two bare knuckle fights. How have you improved your skill set? Who? Big time, you know, a lot of improvement. Uh, the very first fight, you know, we were in this tournament setting, so we were very careful, you know, not getting cuts, not, you know, not suffering any damage in our hands, you know, getting the feel. I mean, I had a fight, a, a bare knuckle fight since back in, in high school, you know, in, in early ages before I started MMA. So, you know, wanted to test the waters and we did, a marvelous show where I I literally took one jab in a five round fight. I walked in like this and I walked out like that. Like if you look at the tape, I, this guy, you know, Elvin Brito landed one jab on me. And 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 Jim Adams loves to call out how he knocked him out, how I did five rounds. Well, yeah, I love being in there. I just played skill, footwork. I just played hard. I just played everything that he does not have. And and um. In the round two in the, of the tournament, which the tournament was crashed off, but in my second fight, you know, Valley Flag was a very strong opponent that came from beating in his last fight, Melvin Gillard, a, a very tough opponent. And Melvin Gillard is known for his power, and he couldn't take him out the way I did. You know, and, and they fought in a heavier division. I think Melvin Gillard was like 168 when he fought him. You know, so, you know, I took him out, and I displayed that I do have the power, I do have the speed to put you away fast if I choose to. So, you know, you know, having that said, um, round three and every other fight after this, I'm not worried about my hands. I'm not worried about anything other than knocking my opponent out as soon as possible. So um, there's no better way that if, look, if something's going to happen to me, the only worry I ever had in bare knuckle was my hands. And if something's going to happen to my hand, <laughs> It's going to be up to somebody sleeping on the floor. So it doesn't matter, you know, how he'll after. So that's where we are right now. So, Luis, why are you and Jim at odds with each other? Well, there was, there was nothing personal from me. Um, you know, I've said it over and over again. I was one of the guys that was always rooting for Jim. Jim and I were friends. We weren't buddies. We never hung out and had a beer. We never watched the fight together, had a barbecue. We weren't that much of a friend. We, we were friends because we were training partners and we had a, a mutual friend of ours that passed away, uh, you know, Josh Saman. Oh, yeah. And, and um, he rest in peace. And, and, and he's the one that brought us together. He brought Jim over to my old gym, you know, MMA Masters. We spent some time in the cage. We spent some time on the mats. You know, nothing, nothing was wrong until... He decided to get salty about the fact that I got the title shot that he had been asking for. I mean, it's not like it wasn't given to him. It was given to him. It was his choice to say, you know what? My trainer is, uh, co- you know, conceived uh, COVID and I don't want to do this fight without him. Whatever the reason, I respected his reason and his decision. I didn't have no problem with that, you know, and so, but I'm not going to stop or or. Dave and, and the promotion is not going to stop the show because he decided he doesn't want to fight for the fight, for the title. You know, so I went forward. I took the belt, but this dude was really salty about it. You know, he opened his mouth. 
you know, said what he had to say. And now he, you know, he took, you know, he, he did what we do in bare knuckle. He took off the gloves and so did I. I didn't hold anything back. He said what he said. I said what I said. You know, it was great for the sales. And I think it was great for the sales because it was natural, it was organic, it's the truth. You know, the truth came out. His true, his true color showed. And now he's in this position. In the end of the day, Jim, Jim is fighting me because he has to fight me. There's, there's no other, there's no other, you know, truth to this. I'm the one that's holding the title. This is the only way that he can have a possibility of having a title is to come through me. So he has to take this fight. There's no other choice. Sounds like you're extremely confident going into the fight, Ken. <laughs> always, <laughs> always <laughs> confident. Always confident. I'm a very hardworking person. Um, I have a ton of experience, you know, in the ring, in the cage. Um, I'm very confident over myself because of the work that I put in and my skill level. You know, back then when we were training partners, he was nowhere near my skills, and I've only improved since then. And I'm not saying that he hasn't. He's definitely demonstrated that he's a different fighter, a different person today than he was when he was in UFC. But I have not stopped growing. I have not stopped improving. And I was better then. I'm better now. And I will always just be better. I, I would always have that number on him. That's a scary thought, Luis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Do you respect Jim as a fighter? Of course. Absolutely respect him as a fighter. Absolutely. 100%. Yes. Hardworking uh, training partner that he was uh, and when we were working together and, 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 you know, he's done a ton for the sport in his four fights. He's showed none but action, you know, highlight knockouts, and you know, help the, the sport grow. You got to respect that. You have to respect that. What about as a person? Do you respect him as a person? Definitely respect him as a person. He kind of surprised me, you know, when we started to go head in head. But as a person, before our altercations, you know, because there is mixed feelings, right? You, you, There is an emotional part that is in you know in the fight in the fight game so you know though, you know a, a lot of the way that I see him has changed of course but before that you know you know great person you know great uh training partner great friend you know he great human being period he's good he's a, he's a sweet guy he's, he's the beast out is a sweet dude you know he's a really really cool person and um I've never had any problem with him I've I've always looked at him like like a straight up, you know, like a samurai, a good, you know, human being, and as a person in and out of the cage, always behaved himself as a champion too, you know. And, you know, it was only until we started going back and forth that I started to see like, oh, okay, well, maybe, who knows, what was it? Maybe envy, maybe uh, greed, as you said, he wants to be the champion, but those are not things that you want to judge somebody by. I mean, I, I believe that, in this game, if you don't believe in yourself the way that he's, you know, imposing that he does, then you shouldn't even be here. You know, so I got no problem with that. Which brings me to my next question, which is in mm -hmm. an interview, you said that Jim got in your face. Let's talk about that. Okay, well, you know, I mentioned the way that I grew up. I know that we're not in the street, we're not in the hood. I know that. I grew out of the hood a long time ago. Um, but, you know, when you say things like, hey, we can do it right now. This is, I'm quoting his words exactly, okay? Hey, we can do this right now. The lights are on, like pay-per-view. And then you say things like, meet me in the middle. And then you get in my face and you rub your face on my face. You're asking for it, you know? You're asking for it. I'm going to give you a warning shot. I could have broke his nose if I wanted to. If I was, if I was stupid and not in control of what I was doing, Right. Then I would have reacted like I have in the past, which is a headbutt to the nose, break the nose, and what's next? That wasn't the case. I gave him a tap, a little love tap in the forehead, forehead to forehead. I gave back the fuck off, man. You know, excuse the language, but back up. You know, don't don't get in my face and expect not to get touched. Don't call me out. Talk to, talk about beat me in the middle. You know, press your face like in the face, and I expect for me to react with something. So that was my warning shot to him. You know, and then there was this little. Uh, booger next to him that pops out of nowhere, tries to jump in, and is more mad than he is. And I'm like, who the hell is this guy? Like, what are you? Like, you don't you don't belong in this. This is not like Jim is not being attacked by two or three thugs 
James a grown ass man. He says something, step to another man. The other man reacted. This is a man in a man confrontation. You know, champion defending his title to another fighter. Like that kid, whoever that was, whether his family or not, had no business there whatsoever. You know, I keep bringing that up because it's the truth. He should smack the little kid and tell him, like, look, man, let's be real. Let's say that there's nobody in the crowd and it's just me and this kid alone. You really gonna react like that with me? Like, come on, man. You know, I'll just slap this kid around like nothing. Like, come on, man. You know? So don't, don't, don't go and be like, because you see a crowd and you see people gonna stop it and act tough. Like, brother, please. You wanna act tough? Come and spot with me in Fish Street Gym or Young Times Foundation. You're welcome anytime. Come and spot with me. And then you can act tough. So do it legal. So do you think he's scared of you? Do I think that Jim is scared of me? I don't believe that Jim is scared of anybody. Uh, I, I'm not scared of anybody. I'm not scared of any man. Now, do I, do I believe that he's insecure about his skill with me? Yes, I do. Do I believe that he does not truly believe in his brain that he can beat me? Yes, I do believe that. Do I think that he's scared of me? No, I don't think he's scared of me. I think he's going to put on his big boy pants, show up to the fight, and give it his best shot. That's what I believe. But do I believe that he really believes that he can beat me? I really don't. Because I've demonstrated in the gym over and over again how I spanked him. And I've only improved since then. And now we don't have gloves on. So, I, you know, I respect his heart. I don't believe that he's scared of me. But I, I don't believe that he truly believes that he can get through me. Before we go today, Luis Baboon Palomino, is there anything else you want to add? And I wish you good luck on your title defense against Jim Allers at BKFC 14. Thank you, Susan. I just want to add, you know, thank you once again, because you always have just the perfect questions and, and you know, you, you bring out what everybody wants to hear, you know. <laughs> and uh, if I can also thank, you know, first of all, Dave, uh, Dave uh, Feldman, you know, for for his dream being a part of my life today. And I want to be a part of growing his dream to that potential that he sees it. I want to be a big part of that. I don't want to only be recognized and remembered as the first 155 world champion that ever existed for the BKFC. But also, I want to take this to the next level. And by that, I mean, bring me the biggest name possible that we can smash in the square circle. You know, other than that, my, my sponsors, I have a ton, so I'm only gonna name the ones that are paying the big bucks to be represented on my shorts, which is FYI, Florida Yas International, Mr. Ralph Navarro, uh, Fusion CBD, can't go on without Fusion CBD, man. They got me healthy, they got me good. Uh, Divino Ceviche, uh, 1-800-Injured, Carbon Fiber Music, Gorilla Barber, Steamy Looking Fresh, Sativa, Bonnell Marine, and my gyms, Young Tigers Foundation with Eric and Dita Gastaglia, my striking coach for the last five years. Dino from uh, Dino Spencer from the world's famous Fish Street Gym. He's been my coach, my friend for many years, and my official coach since before I signed with BKFC. And Amna Pareda, my strength and conditioning coach from the workout spot for the last five years, who I always say and I always think because he turned an athlete, a fighter, into an athlete. You know, so thanks to all of those. All right, combat sports fans, BKFC 14 goes down Friday night from Miami Beach, Florida. And as we just told you, features the long-awaited grudge match between Luis Baboon Palomino and Jim Ehlers. And there is no love lost between the co-main event fighters either, Dat Wynn and Reggie Barnett. You can catch all the action on the BKTV app, which you can download on iPhone and Android. All right, fight fans, help go out. Like, comment, and share this video. You can comment below, by the way, I read them all. I'm Susan Singari for Bare Knuckle News. And remember, no one beats us to the punch.